Hi and welcome to Plastic Models by Regular Dude and part 8 of the Plastic Models for Beginners building from a photo. Here's the photo. So where I left off last time is the vehicle was for the most part done except for the tracks and I was working on the figures. So the figures I've got some done on those. I just have a little bit of weathering, a little bit of blending to do on those and they will be finished. So the last thing I need to do is the tracks. And as I mentioned um, in the earlier videos, uh, the tracks someone kindly sent to me um, did some weird stuff and basically fell apart. And then the tracks that came with the kit are not the correct type because uh, I need the rubber chevron type, the T48s. And uh, these are just the plain flat rubber block tracks, the ones that come with the kit. So I ordered... I generally use Kaizen tracks, and um, I couldn't find my, the place I get them from normally was out. So I had to think of something else. And the only other thing I could come up with, and I guess it was as good a time as any to try them, were the Frule model tracks. Right here, Sherman T48 type, number ATL48. Um, there's 200 links, etc. And they are the rubber block type. Now, I'm not going to do a review on these because there's millions of reviews on these type of tracks, this brand of tracks, because so many people like them. I have never used them, and I figured this was a good, as good a chance as any to try them out. So the contents of the box, in case you're interested, are three bags of track links, the wire for the pins, and uh, two little sheets. The one sheet just gives some general information on how to uh, deal with them if you have to uh, drill out the holes for the pins. This is the size drill bit you use. Um, etc. etc. It's just some uh, general instructions. Then here are specific instructions for these kits. Now there's two bags of tracks here and a third bag. And the difference apparently are these tracks here are uh, angled a little bit different in the molding process to allow them to wrap around the curved edges so like back here at the trailing bogey the front bogey the drive sprocket and the idler so I'm gonna have to uh, see how those work and figure out how many are supposed to go in each place because it doesn't specify it just says this set includes two type track links one with the end connector a 90 degree angle for straight top and lower run, the other the other with slightly bend in connectors, smaller quantity for the marked darker areas. Um, so I'm going to get some out of the bag and take a look and see if we can see what the difference is. Alright, so here's what we have. Um, the one on the left, see if I can hold these where you can see them. The one on the left the end connector is at a slightly downward angle in relation to the track pad itself whereas this one is straight across so that is the difference so I think what I'm going to do is I am going to work on the one for the curve sections first so I can determine how many I need to go around each segment and label them accordingly and then uh, see how they fit. So I'm going to put this straight one back in the bag, set that aside, and get these. Now something else I want to try, there's a channel called Andy's Hobby Headquarters. And I'm sure a lot of you may have heard of it. And uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to try a trick that he has mentioned which is you take staples and use those for the pins 
and you insert them from the back side. If there is a back side on these. And then you just clip them off. And that way, um, it saves you a lot of time having to cut all this wire. But I'm going to monkey around with it and try both and see what happens. And uh, come back and show you what I've discovered. Alright, I've put together a few of them so far and got this so let me show you what I'm doing here and again uh, big thanks to Andy's hobby headquarters Andy um, showed this particular method of putting frule model tracks together and it works really well you just take a regular old staple from a regular old staple gun line your track up your segments And <clears throat> and insert it thusly. Then what I do, I don't know if he does this or not, but this one I've discovered works pretty good for this. Once you get it bottomed out, you pull it out just ever so slightly, not much at all. Then take some cutters you really don't care that much about and cut it off flush. And by pulling it out, you then have room to push it down past the hole. Okay, so let me do another one real quick here. And out of all the ones I've done so far, I haven't had to do any cleanup on them. So, um, i got to say, I am impressed thus far. Now, I will say that compared to the Kaizen tracks, um, the nice thing is, Kaizen being the one I use most of the time, the nice thing is, is there is not um, any cleanup, at least on this set. There's not any cleanup to have to mess with like you do on the plastic Kaizen tracks. So that's kind of nice. Um, as far as the uh, functionality of these tracks, I can really see how they would be really really nice for say a uh, Russian or um, or a German vehicle because of the fact that they are weight kind of weighty and really flexible um, that makes it nice now for a vehicle like this that has live, you know, what's referred to as live tracks. It's not as big of an issue. However, it's still pretty nice. But price-wise, I think on a vehicle like this, I would prefer, just for economic sake, I would prefer to use the Kaizen tracks. But I would definitely, definitely say these are good for quote-unquote dead track vehicles. So there's three of them together. I've determined that seven seems to be the appropriate number for the drive sprocket. So I'm going to do another one of seven. Don't need as many for the back. So I'll experiment with that. And I will go ahead and get a run of these tracks together. And I will mark, probably with a Sharpie or something, uh, where these go so I can make sure when I get them put onto the vehicle that they match up like they're supposed to with the idler and the uh, and the drive sprocket so anyway that's it I'm gonna go to uh, go ahead and finish a run and come back but my impression so far is so far so good 
All right, as you can see here, I've got a full length of tracks completed. And <clears throat> I have marked, you can probably see some little black marks. Those are marks denoting where that particular set of links goes. Now, the difference between these links and these, the rest of them, is the ones with, um, they're separate links where you have the in connector, okay, with the guide horn, okay. Um, now, what the deal is, is in relation to the trackpad itself, You know, most of them are just flat, okay? Well, the ones that are come in the small bag by themselves are angled, so the trackpad is more like this. This is exaggerated drawing, okay? Whoops. Just so you can see what I'm talking about. And those are the ones that are to wrap around the wheels, okay? So it keeps the... You know, since there's a pivot point on the side here and over here on the actual track pad, um, it keeps the, instead of the end connectors being kind of wonky looking, it keeps them following a path around. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's why they're like that. So, anyway... I've got a mark so I know where what goes where. And then on the back, I marked what link, what set this is. So these, for to go around the drive sprockets, I needed one, two, three, four, five, six of the special angled ones. Okay, the ones that come in the small bag. So I used that as my starting point, and I lined them up with the last one being right on top. Okay, and then from there I worked out. So these two here are the ones that would be here wrapping around this road wheel, okay? Then these two here are the ones that wrap around this road wheel. One, two, three, four, five here are the ones that wrap around the idler, okay? And to keep all that lined up, I mark this right front, RF. That's upside down, but you know what I mean. So, whenever I wrap them around the tracks, these two here will connect down here on the bottom, uh, right about here, okay? And that's what it'll look like. All right. So what I did was I, on one side, after I got the track links together, and the total is 63 plane links, and then 15 of the angle links for a total of 78 gives me just the right amount to get around here and keep it somewhat taut. Um, but still be able to fit together and not have, you know, any excessive sag. So what I did is after I got it all put together, um, I laid it on its side like this, and I took some tweezers, whoops, the wrong ones. I used these tweezers here, and I just went and made sure every one of these pins was pushed down completely all the way around. Then I used my CA, my thin CA glue, with this really fine applicator tip. And I just squeeze it enough to where I get little drops hanging out the, the end, and then I just go by and touch each one, and capillary action will draw the thin cement, uh, the thin CA glue down into the end of the end connector. Now there was a couple of them that it was a little bit looser, so the, the glue went all the way through to the next um, link. 
So all I did was I just took it and just worked it back and forth, back and forth till it became loose again. That way you maintain the flexibility of the track. So that's basically how I put those together. So the next thing I'm going to do is put the other length together. Then I'm going to prime and paint and lightly weather the tracks. Then I will put them back on the vehicle and finish weathering them. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble the rest of the tracks, get them primed, and start the paint process. Now that the tracks are fully assembled, whoa, I am using, um, I primed the tracks front and back, top and bottom, whatever you want to call it, with uh, Steinle Res Black. And it looks like it's stuck pretty good. Never primed anything metal other than um, photo etch. So once I got that, let that dry up good, what I've done is I've got the Ultimate Weathering Wash um, Rust. And I am applying some to all of the end connectors like you see there and um, it looks okay like it is it's kind of a little bit brighter than I would not like to have it but the next step is going to tone that way down to where it's not going to be so bright red because the plan is and I've already experimented on one uh, like on a single link on the end um, keeping in mind that the vehicle in the photo is running through a river and I went with a gloss uh, kind of a shinier weathering on the lower edges of all of the uh, running gear and I'll have some uh, wet splashing going on the vehicle itself um, I am going to be putting a gloss coat on these tracks and because of that to simulate it's you know rolling through water so what i'm wanting to uh replicate is wet tracks so running through a river like that most if not all of the mud and dirt would be washed off or very faint so and that is what i'm going to go for so there's not going to, other than this uh, bit of rust on the end connectors, which would be there regardless. Um, it's going to be pretty weathering free other than the simulated wetness. Because that would darken up the rubber portions of the tracks being wet. And it would also tone this rust down a little bit. So once all this dries up good, then I'll spray it with the uh, with the clear coat. 